Hey, what's up? Dave with Brazos Valley Strength. And today we're gonna to be talking about bench press grip, or I guess we could just say why I think that many people are bench pressing wider than they should be. So I wanted to set this up with a few concepts, um, you know, kind of mechanical tension concepts. Uh, and, and then after that, we'll, we'll try to keep this video relatively short and concise. But one of the first and biggest things to understand is just that where the loading is going to be the hardest for any muscle, right? So we can illustrate this through a few different little exercises. We can say that the further away from a joint that the load, the external load is, that is where it's going to be harder, right? So if I'm doing a lateral raise, if I bend my elbows, that's easier to raise the weights than if I have my arms fully extended. It's just going to increase how much total force is required to raise my arm the further away from that joint that it gets. One of the other things here too, is that when the, the, the arm, if we're talking about lateral raises, but when the lever being your arm is perpendicular to the line of force, that's also where the load is going to be the heaviest, like the internal forces of the muscle are going to require the most force to move, right? So same thing with the lateral raise. If we're using free weights, that's always just gonna be gravity is our line of force towards the ground. If it's a cable, you can just envision it that the cable is the line of force. So pretty easy, just kind of straight line down. So if I'm doing lateral raises, the hardest part of that movement with dumbbells is going to be when it's aiming straight at the ground. So we can think about those two things uh, and, and really frame that as far as our uh, you know, internal tensions and really the, the level of force that is going to happen within the muscles. Because I think that people do almost always, when they're thinking about bench press grip, frame it around the triceps and how much difficulty, how much force is going to be required from the triceps but sort of treat the pecs as a constant. And they're not really. So it, there's really just going to be an inverse relationship here. And that's what I want to try to find is a good balance position between the pecs and the triceps. So in my demonstration, in my videos, I have three different grips here. It's just gonna say close grip, medium grip, and wide grip. These are relative to me, I guess, right? So I, my wide grip is outside the rings in these demonstrations. I'm gonna talk about that somewhat. We're talking about powerlifting, so the rings still matter, um, but we're gonna talk about like, I, I guess it matters on a, you know, an ultimate scale, you know, wide relative to my frame compared to some other people. So close grip for sure is going to be harder on the triceps, but we just talked about why. Right, so if my grip is closer, when I get down to the bottom, if my hand is very much inside of my elbows, obviously there's more range of motion. I have to move my arm through that entire range of motion while there is significant amount of force. We have pretty good leverage at long muscle lengths, but almost always the tension at those long muscle lengths is just very, very high. Right, so even though I have good leverage down there to be able to move the rep with my triceps, it's still going to require a whole lot of tension to be able to move that rep in the first place. So clearly that's not a good solution that we don't wanna put ourselves in a position that is just clearly inefficient. So most of the time, the recommendation for people is to find somewhere where at the bottom of the lift, people's wrist, their hand, whatever, is stacked on top of their elbow. We can say that their, their forearm is relatively vertical and maybe slightly outside of that. I would agree with that. I think that that's a very good starting point. But what I wanna demonstrate here is that almost any grip outside of like the widest of grips, pretty much any grip can accomplish that. So even if I go with a very close grip bench press, that will also make me have a lower touch point. I'll tuck my elbows a little bit more. And then from the back of my bench press, my forearms are still pretty vertical. So now are we saying that pretty much every bench press at the bottom is equal as far as efficiency? No, because down there, the closer that my bench press grip is, I'm going to lose a lot of my ability to really maximize the ability of my pecs to produce force. So I think what we need to look at is the hardest part of a lift for people and put our bench press grip, the angle of our forearms, where our forearms are relatively vertical, maybe slightly outside of that, at the hardest portion of the lift. So when you're bench pressing, 
close grip, whatever, whatever your current bench press grip is. When you get stuck, if you're doing a good job with bench, you're gonna be moving the barbell back towards your chest. The closer grips will clearly see that the elbows are outside the hands, right? And we're just stuck right there. So from that position, we can just slide them out and we're probably going to be in a better position. We are for sure going to be shifting some of that load away from our triceps and onto our pecs. That's okay, right? Probably at the moment, we have not maximized the loading, the, you know, the force production, the, the, the ability for our pecs to produce enough force to be able to move the barbell, right? So by moving our grip out, we are going to be shifting some of that loading towards the pecs, but we're shifting it off the triceps. Great, we've done a good job right there. But I don't think that it's as easy as just saying that the forearm should be vertical, at the bottom for sure, but in the middle of the lift or wherever the lift is hardest for you, that's at least a pretty good starting point to avoid major drawbacks within the tricep, right? Like major limitations based on the lack of efficiency just with the grip that you've chosen. So I think this is kind of the, uh, I don't know, the, the, the tipping point where some people get it wrong. Where they start to say, okay, so I wanna shift it away from my triceps because my pecs are stronger. Me going with my wider grip bench press, I can reduce range of motion. My pecs are stronger, let's do that. Well, now we're actually kind of moving into my first example of that the further away a load is from a joint, the harder it is going to be on that muscle. And that becomes relevant right now with the pecs, right? So as we're shifting it wider and we're moving our triceps into more extension, closer to that fully extended position, which by the way, our muscles actually do lose leverage near their end range of motions when they're fully contracted, but pretty much always, the load is, there, there's just not a lot of load in those positions, right? So like doing a squat. At the bottom of a squat, there's a ton of force on my quads, my, but my quads have pretty good leverage, right? So the combination of those two things balances out overall. As I'm standing up, the external load is still the same, but as I'm getting closer to that extended position, there's just not that much force required to continue extending. So even though I'm, I'm losing leverage, there's just not that much force required to move the joint in the first place. But that is important for bench press here, because if I go very wide and my triceps are nearly extended the whole time, my triceps may not have a very good ability to help out, right? They're just not very strong in that nearly fully extended position. So we are shifting a whole, whole lot to the pecs. And for people who don't have very big arches, this can end up being you know, way too much, way too much work overall, even if the visual range of motion for the barbell is not super long. So if you look at it from the back and you take a very wide grip bench press, and, and I think this is probably a good spot for me to <laughs> define, I guess, wide grip. I'm five foot 11, I have pretty long arms, right? I'm 110 kilos, so I'm a bigger guy, right? For me, if I bench press, max width bench, index fingers on the ring, it still looks fairly natural. My, my hands are not super far outside of my elbows at that point. So my wide grip, at least for these videos, had to be outside the rings to kind of demonstrate this. But by me moving my grip wider or anybody moving their grip wider, the problem is that we may not shave off enough range of motion to make it easier on the, you know, the total work required. And we may be shifting so much of that load onto the pecs without much assistance from the triceps that I'm just making the lift harder for myself. So for somebody like me, very long arms, a very wide bench press feels a lot worse for me. I actually, well, currently I'm bench pressing a little bit closer because my pec is kind of hurting. But generally speaking, my normal bench press grip is my middle finger on the ring. It's a, it's a pretty comfortable, natural feeling grip for me. It checks all these boxes, but I could go wider. I, I've tried to go wider. I've tried to go wider and do internal rotation. And it's so incredibly hard. Basically down there at the bottom, it just feels like an insurmountable amount of load for me to overcome. So I think a lot of times people look at, you know, very wide grip bench pressers, very efficient bench pressers, and they kind of assume that wider is always going to be better. But there's so many body types and kind of leverages that really factor into this. So if by you going wider, you aren't visibly reducing the range of motion that you get at your upper arm, right? So from like elbow to shoulder, humerus, 
down there at the bottom, if you're still having to go a very, very long way, then almost certainly you would be better off bringing that grip in a little bit and getting a little bit more balance. Not to mention that most people tend to, uh, you know, feel a little bit better, kind of have a little bit more longevity. And, and really going back to my retraction video, I, th it was one of my thoughts that kept coming up, especially within the comments in that video, that so many people watching my videos or like trying to get in the sport or whatever, or, uh, you know, fairly recreational, I guess, with the way that they're lifting. And so even concepts here, right? Like we go with a wider grip and they're mentioning how much discomfort that they feel kind of down at the bottom in their shoulders. And they're saying, oh, if you don't retract, you're you know, busting up your shoulders. But one of the things I said in that video was about reduction in range of motion, that people now squeezing their backs and reaching their chest to the bar and all of that kind of stuff does reduce range of motion. And it can very much help how much we're, how much load that we're feeling down there at the bottom and how comfortable the lift feels. But I guess my argument would be that we should be trying to do both of those. We should be trying to reduce range of motion and find a nice comfortable position to where we have a good balance of leverage between the pecs and the triceps. So I think as a, um, I don't know, a little heuristic here is that we should be looking at the hardest part of the lift that your forearms are relatively vertical, for sure not inside of vertical, your hands should not be inside your elbows, slightly outside is probably okay. That's, that's gonna be a very good start for most people. If you are always feeling that you are failing off your chest and you have long arms, not a very big arch, right? Like there, there's the total range of motion just doesn't change very much. If you bring your grip in a little bit, I would very much encourage people to try that closer grip. And I think that we see this with, especially as people move up in weight classes. And I don't think it's like, a, it's not a weight thing, right? It's a general body size thing, right? A 5'11 person with long arms, those rings are fairly close for me as we get into the lower weight classes and just kind of smaller, shorter people overall, that reduction in range of motion might be enough that even though it's harder on the pecs, the range of motion is reduced enough to be able to make the lift more efficient and a little bit easier. But if you're a, you know, average size male or whatever, or a lot of times kind of the, the middle weight females or whatever, probably can do pretty well to move the grip in, have it be a little bit more repeatable, comfortable. We can build a lot of muscle in that range and it may not be quite so stressful and may actually end up being a little bit more efficient just because we're gonna have a little bit more balance through our leverages. So I, at some point, <laughs> I always keep promising it, the uh, complete guide with bench press, talking about bar path and things like that, right? Like there, there were a lot of concepts about touch point and like, you know, where the bar needs to go and all that, that factor into this. Um, so, you know, automatically, the closer that you grip, the lower the bar is gonna touch so that we can try to circumvent those things. That's always going to be true. But at the hardest part of the lift, the barbell will generally be over your shoulders. You can kind of practice that, right? Is, is move the barbell maybe a third of the way off your chest with an MV barbell and mess around your hands and find a position to where you're relatively vertical with your elbows completely flared. And then you can kind of play around with touch point and make little adjustments from there. So it's not just as simple as move your hands out. It's gonna get easier. It's gonna get more efficient because likely you're actually making it a good bit harder on your pecs through that range of motion. So if this video was helpful, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time.